Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about acute renal failure. So the kidney is the guy who filters the blood. He gets rid of the waste and he regulates the electrolytes, including uh, hydrogen ions. So he regulates pH. So if our kidney's not working, some of the signs and symptoms we might see are... Uh, for example, hypertension. So if we're not getting rid of uh, enough sodium and water, uh, we can get too much fluid on, on board and we can get hypertensive, we can get fluid overload. If we're not getting rid of uh, uric acid, we get uh, uremia, which includes uh, malaise, uh, fatigue, confusion, uh, oliguria, anorexia, nausea. We also might make a lot of extra erythropoietin because our kidneys uh, are not getting enough blood to them, so they think that we need more blood. We can get hyperphosphatemia. We can get uh, metabolic acidosis, which uh, we talked a little bit about uh, before and we'll talk more about. And uh, pain, dryness, uh, genitourinary symptoms. So... Um, the different causes of kidney acute kidney injury include pre-renal causes, which means we're not delivering the goods to the factory. We can have renal causes, which means the factory is not working on the inside, and we can have obstructive causes, which means we're not uh, transporting stuff out of the factory. So if you can't get uh, if you can't get all these things out of the factory uh, because of an obstructive cause like a problem with the ureters, bladder, or urethra, then everything builds up and causes uh, causes a backup of all the waste products and eventually could cause uh, problems to the factory itself. So uh, pre renal causes. Anything that causes a hypoperfusion or not getting enough blood to the kidneys, like if you don't have enough blood in general, uh, hypovolemia, which could be from burns or trauma or any other uh, cause of hypovolemia. Uh, cardiogenic shock can do this. Thromboembolism, uh, specifically to a, a renal artery. Sepsis, SIRS, anaphylaxis. Renal artery stenosis, though that's generally not as much of an acute thing, and hepatorenal syndrome all can mean we're not getting enough blood to the kidneys for the kidneys to do their job. And some drugs can do this too, like ACE inhibitors and ARBs, uh, diuretics, beta blockers, and chemotherapy. All of these can lead to pre-renal renal failure. So the renal causes... Uh, glomerulonephritis, which we'll do a video on, acute tubular necrosis, acute uh, interstitial nephritis, um, and tumor lysis syndrome. These are all uh, things that can cause damage to the kidney itself and stop the kidney function, as well as uh, all these drugs here. So there's a lot of drugs that can cause problems in your kidneys. Uh, NSAIDs and aspirin, as well as antibiotics, are the ones that we think about the most. There's chemotherapy, heavy metals, uh, antihyperlipidemics like statins and gemfibrozil, uh, antifungals and antivirals, and ACE inhibitors. So trying to stop infection is a big cause because a lot of these uh, anti-infectious agents are nephrotoxic. And then NSAIDs and aspirin, those are the big ones to remember here. So the post-renal causes, this is per more simple because um, there's only a few things that can stop uh, stop transport, transport uh, away from the kidney. So uh, you can have uh, benign prostatic, prostatic hypertrophy, um, which will close off your urethra, kidney stones, um, anywhere in the, in the tract can cause a, a obstructive renal failure, malignancy, um, and an obstructive catheter, some of the big causes that you might see. So diagnosis is where this all gets more complicated. So the 
you're going to have some keys in your history, hopefully, that will help you to determine if this is a pre-renal, renal, or post-renal cause. So the pre-renal causes, hopefully you'll have uh, some, kind of a, some kind of a clue in the pre-renal causes. You know, either they have a heart disease of some kind, or some, for some reason we know why there's not get blood getting to uh, the kidneys. But if not, um, then our, our labs are going to help us to find, figure that out as well. So the, the major labs that you look at with uh, pre-renal is the BUN over creatinine is going to be greater than 20. So BUN is blood, urea, nitrogen, creatinine um, is the uh, product that we use to measure GFR. So um, if that ratio is elevated, then that helps us think about pre-renal causes. Uh, fractional excretion of sodium, if that's, uh, if that's less than 1%, that tells us that the kidneys are trying to hold on to sodium. So if they're trying to hold on to the sodium, it's probably because they don't think there's enough fluids, there's enough blood, so they're, they're not getting rid of sodium and the water that goes with it. And uh, the specific gravity tells us something similar uh, if it's greater than 1.02. So uh, all those things are, are blood tests. Of course, we'd get a, a UA, uh, which might show if there's RBCs, white blood cells, CAS, urine volume. So the, the CAS, um, Highland CAS, are indicative of pre-renal failure. Uh, you can have red cell CAS or granular CAS that might indicate a glomerulonephritis or a, a acute tubular necrosis. Or you can have white, white cell CAS, which are usually post-renal, could be renal as well. And um, so those things will help us... Uh, we can also do a renal ultrasound. Uh, the size of the kidneys will help us uh, uh, indicate if we have uh, an obstructive cause. We, you generally get a hydronephrosis, which will help us to identify that. Um, helical CT, we're going to be getting, especially if there's flank pain, that will help us to identify uh, renal uh calcinosis, uh, what's it called, renal stones, and uh, a catheter might be helpful if it's, um, if it's an obstruction in the lower uh, urinary tract, and then a kidney biopsy is kind of last resort. That's, if we're thinking it's an intrinsic cause or a renal cause um, and we can't find out what it is, then we might do a kidney biopsy. But that's pretty pretty low on the list. We also have these criteria. Um, we have the rifle criteria that help us to decide how bad this is. So the th three things we look at are creatinine, GF GFR, and urine output. And I don't think that you should memorize this if you're like a third-year medical student. But uh, But it'd be good to know that uh, creatinine uh, that's doubled, double what you expect, um, is associated with uh, kidney injury, and um, it's also associated with a GFR that's less than 50% of normal. So those are good numbers to know. Uh, a doubled creatinine, you think about injury and... Um, a GFR that's less than 50%. The numbers on urine output are probably a good idea to at least have a clue about. So if you have urine output less than uh, 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour, um, that's a indicative of a renal uh, risk or injury. If it's even lower than that, then we think about failure. And then loss and uh, end-stage renal, renal disease are more just a matter of time. These are when we've lost pretty much all kidney function. 
Um, if it's for four weeks, then we call it loss, and if it's for three months, we call it end-stage renal disease. There is some possibility of regaining renal function if you just have loss, but you think about end-stage renal disease, meaning you're not going to get it back. The GFR, we can calculate or we can estimate with cockroft galt MDRD, CKD, uh, epi, so the, the latter ones are supposed to be a little bit better, but a lot of people are still using Cockroft Galt because it's easier. I don't know how that's all going to pan out in the end, but you can, uh, you can get calculators on your phone probably. So to treat this, we need to stop the offending agent, especially if it's a drug or something we can identify that's causing the, the problem. We're going to probably give fluids and electrolytes, especially if this is a pre-renal cause that is uh, some kind of a hypoperfusion. We can give uh, fluids to help increase the perfusion, and we, of course, want to manage any kind of a hyperkalemia or life-threatening electrolyte imbalance. So another big question is, when do you do dialysis? We can use this mnemonic, which is A-E-I-O-U. And this isn't going to necessarily give us all the answers, but but if you have uh, acidosis or electrolyte in abnormalities that are severe, um, then those are indications. Uh, if you, there's been an ingestion of salicylates, uh, methanol, ethylene glycol, or barbiturates, all those things uh, you might do dialysis for. Uh, if we have overload, again, if we have overload, we're not going to want to give a lot of fluids, obviously. And so dialysis may be one of the only options that we have to, uh, to help the situation. And then severe uremic syndromes you want to watch out for because that could, uh, of course, lead to... Uh, lead to central nervous system problems. Uh, acidosis, hyperkalemia, hypertension, volume overload, and chronic kidney disease are all possible complications of this. So th thank you to uh, Piotr Mikhail Jaworski for your uh, picture of the kidney. And uh, if anybody wants to help out with this project, you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer and uh, that will uh, that will help our project move along thanks